Hey everyone, this is Phyrexian Walker with the 3DH format from Praetor Gaming and I'm just here to do a quick video to talk about how you can import decks into the 3DH spreadsheet to check prices because some of you are probably like, I don't really want to sit there and plug in card after card and build my own deck from scratch for the 3DH format. I want to get a deck quick and dirty offline uh, plug it in, see if it works. If it doesn't work, tweak a little bit to get it where it works so I can get to playing faster. I'm really more about the playing than the brewing. And I get that um, philosophy. You now, Phyrexian brews decks all the time and loves brewing decks, but not everybody has to be just like me. So I get people who just want to get into it and play some decks. So in that vein, I have actually provided a link to my deck stats that has uh, all of my retired decks from past and current seasons um, available for you um, that you can click on. And obviously, I use deck stats. Uh, the steps in this video should be fairly um, compatible with any of your deck building platforms, whether it's deck stats, MPG Goldfish, Architect, whichever ones you use. I mean, there, there are a plethora that you can pick from online. So uh, should be similar, but I do use deck stats, so that's the one we're going to be talking about today. Um, so as you see here, we've got sorted by seasons, one through three, four through seven, kind of grouped those up because over time, you know, uh, seasons one through three was like two and a half to three years ago. So a lot of price changes in two and a half to three years. Um, so uh, we are currently in uh, season 10 slash 10.5. So I labeled that as the current legal season. You can see I also told how many decks are in each folder. So you know how many commanders are in there that you can check out. Uh, there is this one. Nobody can actually see it except for me. I call it the Hell Vault. Uh, anybody gets the reference? You guys should. You're magic players. You should get the reference. Um, but those are decks that I'm just like, no, these push it too much. Whether it's pushed too much because it's just that consistent and that good and does the same thing or a similar thing every time and it's very hard to stop or whether it's because it's just so oppressive that it makes it very hard for the table to do anything. So these are decks that I just consider to be um, too powerful for one of those two reasons and I won't play them anymore and I'm not going to pass them on to somebody else to play either so if a deck ever falls in there it gets retired um, into the hell vault to live out its days um, forevermore uh, in exile and hopefully no one ever breaks that vault open but right now we're going to look and we're actually going to look in seasons one through three I know like I said it's been a long time but we're going to look at one of my old decks um, the scorpion god so this is a deck that I really enjoyed playing back in the day, and I was actually having a conversation with one of our other 3DH streamers, X2Wolf, and uh, he was like, so I'm looking through your decks, and were there any decks that you really like playing? And that was like a loaded question to ask a deck builder like me, because when I started going back and looking, I'm like, yeah, there were several decks I really enjoyed playing, and why did I let those go? And Maybe I want to try to rebuild them. So as you can see, this is my uh, Scorpion deck, uh, God deck from however many years ago it was last edited. And on page from 2.7 years ago so like i said about two and a half to three years ago is all these decks so from uh over two and a half years ago and we're going to check to see what it looks like in the pricing spreadsheet now so on deck stats at least you go to tools right up here um again other programs should have something similar um and i'm going to go to download and what i want to do is i want to download it as a text file um I'm gonna download it as mtgo.txt because that's what I usually do. And then we're just gonna open that up. So then we have this spreadsheet, or not spreadsheet, this uh, notepad file, sorry. Um, and it has all these things. So the first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna find your commander and you're gonna take that out because we put the commander in a different part of the spreadsheet. So we'll put the scorpion god in in a second. The second thing you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna find any cards like basic lands that are greater than one on the spreadsheet. And you're gonna get rid of those. You're gonna get rid of that and you're gonna get rid of your basic lands. Um, now, your last step for being able to copy paste it smoothly into the spreadsheet is you need to get rid of all these ones. Now you could technically go through here and you know go down and do like that and get rid of all the ones by doing that. That's the slow way to do it and it does work, but it takes some time. So the quick way to get around that is you use the command control H. So if you do control H, it pulls up this little box right here. And what it says is it says replace and it says find what? And in this box, you type one space. 
you do have to put the space because otherwise it won't pull the column all the way over. It'll leave this little space right here. If it leaves that little space, when you try to copy paste it into the spreadsheet, it won't work. The spreadsheet doesn't work if things are spelled wrong. It doesn't work if things um, are uh, messed up for different reasons, like an extra space somewhere or stuff like that. It does have to be precisely the card name the way it would be written. Um, so we're going to say replace with. Well, we want to replace it with nothing. We just want it to go away. So after we do that, we're going to hit replace all. And then you see that our list, all of the ones that were there have now disappeared. They don't exist anymore. So what we can now do is scroll on down. Control C to copy it. And then we're going to drop this down and we're going to go over to our 3D spreadsheet. So here, um, this is my, I have one all the way on the far end called price checker. And that's exactly what I use it for is I use it to check the prices. And then if I think it's doable, then I keep it and I move from there. So now I'm going to control shift V. Um, the reason I do control shift is so it doesn't change the formatting of the actual spreadsheet. It just pastes all the values in. So you can see it's pasted all the values in and we're good. And then we're going to type in our commander, the scorpion god. So if we look right here, we can see very quickly by looking at the top, and I talked about this in previous video, here's our current debt cost, here's our current budget remaining. So you see our current debt cost is $4.49. Our current budget remaining is negative $1.49. So if this is negative, your debt costs too much. If this is above three, your debt costs too much. It's two ways of knowing the debt costs too much. So clearly some cards in here are costing too much. We're gonna use another one of the resources I showed before, and that's the sort feature. We're gonna highlight this entire column, and we're gonna sort it by column E, and I'm gonna sort descending. So column E, because that's the card price column, and then sort descending, because it will put the highest cards at the top. So we see, here might be my problem, Bajuka Bog and Thran Dynamo. Look at them cards. They are 80 cents and 70 cents a piece. So if I cut Bajuka Bog and I cut Thran Dynamo, now I'm actually in budget. And I can go from there, I can add in a card for Thran Dynamo, I can add in a basic land for Bajuka Bog, probably basic swamp since Bajuka Bog was, um, and then technically I could play the deck just as is from there, like, I don't know, do I have Hedron Archive in here? Let's sort. I probably do. Um, but we're going to sort by column D. And I can really quickly figure out, no, I actually don't have a Hedron Archive in here. So I was running Thran Dynamo over Hedron Archive because Thran Dynamo must have been cheaper back in those seasons. So I put in Hedron Archive for Thran Dynamo, and I just basic swamp for that Bajuka Bog. Then all of a sudden, I have a 3DH legal deck right at $3. Um, I'm going to go back and do some more tweaking to the deck because a lot of cards have come out, you know, in uh, 2.7 years. So I'm going to do some more checking and change some other things. But that's certainly a way that you can very quickly, you know, identify cards that don't work. One other thing I want to talk about is if you have a couple cases... Um, like, uh, sorry, I don't know why I put the soul ring, bum, bum, bum. Uh, but soul ring, soul ring will say card not found. Soul ring says card not found because soul ring costs more than three ticks. Um, so any card that costs more than three ticks on its own will say card not found. However, also if you spell something wrong, like if I said a refuge instead, it will say card not found because I spelled it wrong. So you do have to double check your spelling and make sure you have the correct spelling. Um, so it will say the correct price. Um, but if you double check your spelling um, and it says card not found, it's too expensive. There is one other case I want to talk about. Um, where this is fast. So one other thing I want to talk about, and I'm just going to find a deck that I know has some of those. So. Hmm. Maybe nib has some. Yes, okay, at least has a couple. So we're going to tools, download, mtgo.txt again. And then real quickly, I'm going to cut the commander and cut our basic lands. And then I'm going to control H 
and replace all. And another nice thing is after you've done this command once, it will pull up as your default unless you change it. So uh, you'll never have to worry about doing it again. Now I'm gonna copy this. I'm gonna put this in the price checker. So what you'll notice is a few cards right here, like commit memory, um, curse of verbosity is just too much now, uh, but primal amulet, primal wellspring, there are cards, you're, you know, dual backed cards. So cards like primal amulet, it just goes based off the face card. It doesn't go based off the flip. So primal amulet, um, Azura's gateway, stuff like that. You just got to use the face name of the card. So you will have to clear it out and then it'll show up in the spreadsheet. Cards like commit memory, um, where it's two parts on the front, um, things like with aftermath, it's actually done this way. It's done commit with the backslash memory, no spaces. Um, so that's two weird cases. Those, so it's either if the card's a flip card, it goes off of whatever the face card would be. So like Nicol Bolas Ravager would go Nicol Bolas Ravager. It wouldn't go based off of it. But if it's a card where, you know, like commit memory, right? So if we pull up Scryfall, look at commit memory. So commit memory, if it's a card where both parts are on the face, you do the first part, commit, the backslash, and then memory in the spreadsheet to get to show up. That's the difference kind of between commit memory and primal amulet. Oh, oops. And again, you got to spell things, right? But Primal Amulet, you know, transforms. That's the difference between the transformation cards. Transformation cards in the spreadsheet just go based off of the original and the cards like Commit Memory or other cards that have two spells on the face of the card, you do the slash, at least within here. Um, so that would be what you do. I uh, hope this video was helpful to you guys. And if you have any questions, Definitely feel free to hit me up on the Discord. You can either send a DM to FrexenWalker03 or you can at Frexen Zero, FrexenWalker03 in D3H channel. Thanks so much.